All right, if you're coming over from our other little carburetor video, welcome back. And if you're new to the video today, um, basically we're just gonna take a look at installing a wideband O2 gauge into um, just any old carbureted vehicle that uh, I guess that you would wanna do. Now, the O2 gauge is bar none the best um, addition you can make as far as a tuning tool to your carbureted car. Now, a lot of us um, are pretty good by ear or by feel, you know, you can get pretty close with a vacuum gauge and everything like that and reading plugs with a carburetor, but um, the O2 gauge really helps you to hone in that last little bit. And if you don't know anything about carburetors, it is an exceptional tool for learning the different circuits. You can see when the different circuits come on in the carburetor from idle to jets, when the power valve comes in, when your secondary is open. Um, it's, it's a great tool and really um, that and a vacuum gauge will take you really far with a carburetor. And I do have a lot of other little carburetor tuning videos here that go pretty in depth that I'll go ahead and link below if you're not familiar. But um, anyway, just looking at it today here, uh, just a really quick overview on the truck. It's a Roller 302 and it has a T5 five speed swap. It's been together for 10 years and I've always um, had the intention of putting a 351 in here and a Tremec uh, five speed, but or six speed or whatever, but it's honestly just done so well. I've just always kept it in this configuration. So you're gonna see some interesting stuff like some flex pipe exhaust. I said 10 years ago, oh, you know, we're gonna just throw this on here really quick because we're gonna put a 351 Windsor in here and you know, that kind of messes with your exhaust and you have to change things around. But 10 years later, here we are. All right, so getting down to it here, let's hop in the truck and get a look at the gauge itself to start off with. And I have an AEM gauge. They're really the cheapest ones. They have a nice auto dim feature. And there's a lot of good pieces with these that um, I really like. It comes as a um, all-inclusive package. They're about $150. And I'm gonna try and go through all the parts and pieces here and leave links below. So you can just go ahead and click to those and go straight to them. Um, with that, we're gonna jump under the vehicle and see where I mounted the um, O2 sensor itself and some of what you need to do there. And AEM does provide really good instructions for this and they're really easy to follow. So we're gonna hop under the truck here really quick, but uh, just taking a look at the truck here itself, here's our T5 swap. So you see we got five gears in the old truck. Pick that transmission up. Oh, I don't know, like I said, 10 years ago and it's been a truck just fine, you know, towing stuff, pulling stuff. As you saw, my bed's loaded down right now. So that's a pretty simple swap to do and I'll leave the link um, to that also, but uh, the old five-speed swaps really do help these rigs out quite a bit uh, to get out of their own way. All right, so getting down here looking at our O2 sensor plumbed in. Now the first thing you'll notice is we're only plumbed into one cylinder bank and um, they do make setups that uh, tap into both, but really one is pretty much just fine. You know, if you want to be really exact, you can go ahead and plumb up two of them, or again, there is setups where they can uh, pull off of both both sides but this is okay for this truck we're just getting it dialed in we just need to make some uh, carburetor videos here and this being flex pipe it's really thin you know and weak I really just didn't want to weld to it it's been here forever so it's nice and and rusty so um, they make these clamps here with this uh, mount and um, I can't remember who makes it again I'll, I'll leave the link I did get all this stuff through Amazon so it's really simple to get it's nothing to too crazy or hard to track down and um, again I'll leave all the links for you so it's nice and easy but the biggest thing with these sensors is you want to come in at a 45 degree angle and um, there are, is some reasoning behind that uh, moisture building up on it and whatever they just want to be able to drain out um, so you want to avoid drilling it in horizontal and definitely you don't want to be coming from below because then you have a nice ground clearance issue potentially but anyway I'm sure the next thing you're wondering is how the heck you get in here and drill this hole that's uh, fairly sizable coming in from above. And really, um, the best way to do it is to use a little Christmas tree bit or a step bit is what they're called, and then a 90 degree drill attachment. And if you, if you don't wanna take your exhaust apart, which I, I really didn't wanna do, and I had all this stuff with me, so I thought, well, we'll just chuck the 90 degree drill attachment on and the uh, step bit and hog through it, which we did, and it all worked out nice. And I'll leave the link for those tools uh, as well. They're, they're really things if you work on cars you should have. That 90 degree drill has saved me a million times. So I'm, I'm trying to be as helpful as I can today. I'll try and leave all those links as well. So again, we're coming in from a 45 degree angle, nothing special. Um, we're keeping all of our 
uh, cabling away from any rotating pieces or anything like that and anything of heat and we're just going right up into the cab and we'll take a look at where I did that again nothing special this is super simple so getting up here with our uh, cheap little $500 overhaul engine we're just tracing the wiring up and we just go right in the cab um, I just chopped into a rubber boot it's already there I mean I guess you can drill holes in your firewall if you really want to um, but it's pretty easy to find these little rubber boots pull them out drill a hole through them and then push everything through so that worked out pretty well and again it's all out of the way of the steering column and everything and that's pretty good and appreciate all this wiring i did back in high school about 10 12 years ago that's pretty comical this is what you don't want to do and there's obviously ways to make things look pretty good so hopefully this winter we get that all squared away also so looking up in the truck here um i guess the last piece is the wiring which is really nice and easy it's real simple um, you just have two wires red and black as uh, is typical with your 12 volt stuff that you have to hook up so your black is obviously your ground you can hook it to any ground that you really want there and your red is a 12 volt power source and um, like i said aem has some pretty good installation notes here to assist you in installing this thing it's really nice and straightforward and the last little note that you want to keep in mind when you're installing this guy is that you want to hook to something that's a 10 amp fuse and you want it to be a switched power source so um <laughs> reason being you wouldn't want to have it on when your truck is just you know off and not running so a switch power source of about 10 amps and then you're uh you're good to go really nice and simple so anyway that's pretty much it um again there's not a whole lot to installing this i put mine in in probably um 35 40 minutes um, i did know what tools i needed and i got those ahead of time and again i'll leave the link below to all the parts and pieces that you need to do this again it's a great tuning aid so moving forward we're going to use this guy to go through and do some carburetor videos where with the vacuum gauge and the o2 gauge side by side you can see when um, each carb circuit is is coming into play and the o2 gauge reflects um, how we did with our adjustments which with each of those so um, anyway moving forward that's something we're going to try and do before winter sets in here in old iowa hopefully we can get through it um, we'll see and if not we'll get it in the spring but um yeah that's pretty much it um the o2 gauge great addition to any old carbureted vehicle and a great tuning tool if you're trying to get your carburetor just perfectly dialed in or if you just want to really overall understand how your adjustments affect a carburetor so anyway there you have it So basically there isn't a whole lot to it. You thread the belt through like you would normally here. We're gonna try and do this with one hand. You're just gonna slip this guy in there, cinch it down. There we go. And then you're gonna bend it back on itself and then you're just going to push down and there we go. Our oil filter is nice and loose now and we can carry on with our oil change. So that's the belt trick. There you go.